All right, diving back into the Kansas City 3. We have now done like two breaking news updates, one full case uh, into the Kansas City 3. Now, uh, this came out and was posted February 2nd, and it says Kansas City Area Police Departments are sounding the alarm after toxicology reports showed three men had fentanyl and cocaine in their systems when they were found dead in the Northland last month. The Independence Police Department said it had seen an an astronomical rise in cases involving fentanyl, while the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department said the rise is steady and alarming. So, and I started digging into this a little bit. It's not only that. They're talking about the strength of this fentanyl that's hitting their streets. It is they're sounding the alarms in this area because the amount of fentanyl deaths that they're seeing is rising in this area. And like we've talked about this quite a bit, but why I want to talk about it again is because I don't. If there's any way, if there's somebody that watches us, right, that that uses things recreationally, uses them addictively, it doesn't matter. Like Anything no, you buy off the street. Yeah, and there's no judgment. No. Nope. But it's important to highlight these things to prevent this from possibly happening to somebody else. And I use this example a lot. I believe it was Arizona, but I don't have it pulled up in front of me. Um, But uh, there was this girl, you can look it up, that lost her life um, because she bought an Adderall, what she believed was an Adderall. She was a college student, and uh, she took a quarter of it to, to study that night and died. A quarter. A quarter of what she thought was a prescribable pill and died because of fentanyl in it. So um, the strength of the fentanyl, you guys, is 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 wild. And we it's did horrible. a premiere. It is. And and it could be so much stronger. There's this there's this mathematical value of like how many times stronger fentanyl is than morphine. But when it's coming from a black market uh, lab, you don't know what's being mixed in there. You don't know if they have their chemical composition correct in making fentanyl. You don't know any of it. You don't know if you could be buying cocaine that has 90% fentanyl in it and 10% cocaine because there is so much fentanyl out right now. It is being pushed so heavily everywhere that Fentanyl is now cheaper than cocaine is. So if you're a cocaine dealer and you have a bag of fentanyl and you're wanting to make that cocaine last longer, it's really easy to add something cheaper to it. So this whole story is really sad. I don't know if we're going to be seeing the chemist, which is the friend that was alive in this whole story. Uh, We don't know if we're going to see some kind of charges brought to him. He ended up going to rehab. We talked about it in our case video that just premiered a few days ago. So check it out. But um, he's in rehab, which puts him under HIPAA. The police cannot go and, you know, get statements from him or anything else. We don't know if there's going to be anything else to it. We don't know if they were all victims of it. And the chemist tends to have a tolerance or, or had a tolerance, so he's the only one that lived. We don't know. But it, I think another thing to highlight here, too, is if all four of them did it, right, it's really important to to highlight that the chemist, the guy, I, I wish I had his name up. It's Jordan something. His name's Willis. Jordan, Jordan Willis, okay? The chemist is Jordan Willis. It's important to note that all four of them could have done it, and if Jordan Willis had... Uh, a tolerance he could have nodded out and his friends could have died and he would have no idea yeah so he's None. he's not actually a chemist he's a scientist that researches <laughs> hiv Data drugs scientist. uh hiv drugs um he, the nickname is the chemist because he used to mix cocktails of drugs in high school you know partying 
Um, that's how we got the nickname. But um, yeah, I was actually thinking about that is, you know, they could have done this cocaine and it could have had just a little bit like it could literally just have a little bit of fentanyl in it and they could have all died and he could have technically actually OD'd but survived and was just knotted out yep. because he has a tolerance. Like, I don't know how often this guy is using cocaine from this dealer that may have little bits of fentanyl in it, or maybe he is an opiate addict. Um, we just don't know, but clearly he has some kind of addiction that he went to rehab for and didn't realize his friends were outside all that time. So it does make me think, we don't know that for sure yet, but not for where, sure. where we're going is it would be very easy for that to happen. And I do feel like he could not notice his friends outside, especially yeah. if he's a user, especially if he, yep. his job is in front of a computer. I can't, my job's in front of a computer and the editing for the podcast. I can't tell you how many times I'll get in front of a computer. Then all of a sudden a day goes by and another one and another one. And you've just been working the entire time. It's really easy to lose track of time and stuff. So, it, you know, if he's not a smoker that goes out back or like his trash cans aren't out back or he has a dog that he lets out back to pee. Uh, why would he go out? He back? does have a dog. And that's part of the issue with his story is that it's changed several times and he claimed that he took the dad to his dad the dad the dog to his dad's house and he never went to go get him over those that weekend or a few days after that which is odd like why did you need to take him to your dad's and why did you leave him there for days um there is a doggy door that the dog can go in and out of the house by itself so, I mean, the, there could his, be story, a fair... his story has changed a few times. And honestly, what I have to say about it is there's no benefit, even if he was afraid to call the police because he was afraid of getting in trouble. Because I've seen it happen. I've seen people OD and everybody takes off running. You know, I've seen it because people have gotten charged with this before. Um even if that was the case where he was afraid to call anybody, what's the benefit of leaving them in the backyard and doing nothing about it? Yeah, I, no, I, I you're agree. gonna get caught eventually. People are gonna come looking for these three men eventually. The only thing that I could come up with is maybe he is such a serious addict that he had a big bag of dope and like kept going at it Binged. like yeah i i don't want to think about this you know take a little bit not out i don't want to think about this take a little bit not out and all of a sudden days have gone by i don't know i Maybe. just don't know that's a plausible theory um you know a addicts don't make sense in the way that they make their decisions nope. and the only thing that matters is the drug and there is a it, it has nothing to do with them as a person their their brain literally feels like it needs it obviously there are ways around that and you can detox and figure out how to cope and get over those things but when you're in active addiction and you have physical withdrawals and everything your brain believes it needs it more than air like for those of you that have never looked at that rat study where they gave rat drugs okay cocaine I, I, cocaine but they also did other drugs too i'm pretty sure it was across the board um it, if the rat had to choose between food and water or cocaine, uh, it picked the cocaine every time to death. Yeah, till it to died. To its death. So, like, those, and that's natural instinct, okay? Yeah, for humans, too. Yeah. Yep. So, interesting, right? I think it's, I think it's interesting. And I think there could be a logical, uh, innocent reason, but... That is strange. Yeah, there's so many addicts who are like so thankful to be alive. You yeah. know, they're like, that's the one thing they're thankful for. It's like, I don't know how I'm alive, but I'm super thankful I am. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. because it, you're, it's a death sentence. Yeah. So, but yeah. But, um, you know, there, there is some rumbling out there uh, that 
people believe or or have some some evidence that there was a U-Haul truck there and they believe that he was actually making the fentanyl. Now understand, the, there's I have not seen anything to substantiate that. But I want to be able to bring it up because that is our motto, you know. Um and uh there are some people out there believe that he was more than just maybe a user, maybe he was helping cut uh, or something of that nature and that's why the dog's gone that's why he was starting to move furniture out that's why he moved out of his house so quick like well you know what's interesting is if he were handling these drugs regularly to distribute them or cut them just it coming into contact with your skin or little bits of dust in the air can make you build a tolerance cuz it can make you literally od yeah. but you can build a tolerance to where he maybe wouldn't have died. Maybe when his maybe. friends came over to party and he gave them all a line. Maybe I'm curious what you guys think though. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of possibilities here and a lot of question marks left uh, unanswered. One thing I will say is from all accounts, it seems like the police have been doing a good job. So um, that's awesome. And yeah. I hope that we just get more answers here because what an awful situation these guys had family members i believe uh two of them had kids right yeah um and uh one fiance like just an awful situation an it awful situation and you know fueled by dope which ugh, yeah but none of, it seems that it seems that none of the three were active drug users like yeah they partied sometimes but which they weren't sense, addicts though. or drug users which makes sense why those guys were the ones that died yep. playing with such a seriously strong uh chemical drug you know yeah it could have just been for old time's sake get a bag of coke you know it goes well with alcohol and then bam yeah but it's lace because of the world we live in today yep but let me know what you think